do something else. Yeah. 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 During the four days, we're teaching a mixture of remote trauma, remote trauma techniques, and also travel safety and how to stay safe to the freelance journalists that work across Asia. During the four days of training, we try to have at least a 50% theory and 50% practical because we think it's really important for people to be able to get hands-on practice. So we use real-life actors during scenarios and we try and base all our scenarios on realistic events that the journalists could come across. The local actors are made up using realistic wounds and blood. So this is the first opportunity that the students actually get to come across people they don't know and people actually speak and scream. Um, and to see the fake blood as well. So it puts the students under quite a stressful environment and it gives them a chance to demonstrate what we've been learning about in the classroom. And we did first aid yesterday and total panic. <laughs> I saw blood, I saw wound, even though it's fake and I'm just like, okay, uh-oh, what do I do first? I, I'll be honest, I panicked the first round. But um, the second time I was more prepared, more calm and like I was talking to myself, talking to the injured person and then trying my best to apply all the skills and techniques that I learned from the class. We also put the students through a simulated military attack. So again, we're using actors and um, realistic weapons. They were firing blank rounds at the students. So it's a surprise attack, and this was to see the students' reaction to gunfire, in particular to see how students cope with the element of fear and the adrenaline that's running through their body, because as we've seen um, quite often, some people can, can react quite naturally and, and find some decent cover to be safe behind, whereas other people tend to freeze. We did a shooting range yesterday. We were trying to work as a team and run for cover. I think it's very important because you never know what kind of situation you'll be in. Uh, it, you could be in the front line, you could be in the jungles, you could be in the city center, you could be in a shopping mall. It's good to be prepared. It's very tiring, it's very scary, honestly. I think self-defense, it's the first reaction. Like, where do you do, how do you stand, where do you put your hands? So I think that's definitely gonna save me. You need to put your, uh, your leg way, way there and you pull me. I'm definitely going to okay. teach all my female friends because they don't think they need it. Yes. They think, oh, I'm always like going to be with a big camera like guy. You have to join or I'm going to be in the group. Oh, right, right, right. Or I'm going to be embedded with the arm, arm groups. Like they will protect me. Somebody will protect me. But you never know. The scenario was that we were journalists in Thailand. And we were meant to be fleeing the country because of a coup. And we, we were under the impression that the military had set up the checkpoint. But when we got there, we found out that it was a rebel group. And they started taking us out one by one. So I was watching my colleagues put on the ground and blindfolded and handcuffed and then just pulled everywhere. And you really lose your sense of direction. And I was actually one of the last people taken out of the van and then led us into a village and we were all kind of in there, separated into different cages. And we were trying to communicate quietly, trying to figure out how to get out of this situation, knowing that we should wait for the perfect moment, because otherwise they'll shoot us or bind us even tighter. They were yelling at us to be quiet. Shut up! They would throw bottles of water at us. Hi, my name is Fabian. One of their other captees came in and kind of gave us the lowdown on what was going on there, that they weren't actually military, that they were rebels, but that occasionally they let their guard down. Yeah, they only have one guard, okay. 
So as soon as we heard that, we were all kind of waiting for that moment. And one of us, Luke, who could actually see the door of the cage, he let us know when the guard went to the bathroom. And as soon as we could, we just, we took off. And I was bound with tape, luckily. Uh, so the second I got out, I just ripped the tape open and we just ran off into the woods as far as we could. So overall, I was, I was kind of surprised with how I reacted to it, but it was a good exercise to know how you will react in situations where you are completely out of control. It's really important because a lot of freelance uh, journalists can't afford to actually go on HEFAT training. At the end of the course, I really hope that the participants will have the confidence to pass on the medical knowledge to other colleagues. And with the extra knowledge that they have, they now um, feel a lot more safe and secure carrying out the work that they do. And I think the course really gave me the confidence to know that I can do something. It might not be perfect, but I could potentially save someone's life. I can get myself out of danger. I don't have to rely on someone else. I, I've been dreaming of doing a, a training program like this because I know I've, I'm exposing myself to danger every, every, every day, every moment when I'm working on the field. <laughs> so I think this is the perfect program for us.